Good morning. It's a real pleasure to address you today as the European Commission's Director General for the Environment. And I would like to thank the European Chemicals Agency and Björn in particular for this opportunity to talk about Europe's chemical strategy for sustainability and where we are now, one year after we adopted it. Now, the chemical strategy for sustainability is a key building block to deliver on the European Green Deal. And actually, its importance has grown with the better understanding of the nature crisis, but also the relevance of chemicals as the basis of our future. When we think of low carbon, of zero pollution, or of resource efficient technologies, we actually think about chemicals. Chemicals are there in everything we do and contribute to our well being. But at the same time, chemicals can harm. And more and more people in the EU suffer from diseases like diabetes, obesity, where also endocrine disruptors are involved. Cancers, respiratory diseases, and diseases of the immune system can all be traced back to harmful chemicals. Now, persistent chemicals like the PUS have contaminated entire regions, and they can be in the water that people drink, in the soils uh, where the crops grow. And certain sections of the population, including the most vulnerable, like children, are still exposed to very harmful chemicals through consumer products in particular, like toys. Now, that's why we need to act, and actually quite urgently. Our vision is to achieve a toxic-free environment where chemicals contribute to society while avoiding harm to the planet and the current and future generations. And the chemical strategy for sustainability is our first deliverable towards this vision. It's a strategy with very concrete objectives in three different spheres. Now, let me start with the first one. The first sphere is to increase protection. We have a lot of scientific evidence of the impacts of the most harmful chemicals on humans and the environment. And especially, as I just said, on vulnerable populations like children or pregnant women. Now, the majority of chemicals in the EU uh, are very well regulated, but they are regulated on a case by case basis and for each specific use. And we know that this approach works to a certain extent, but also that we can do better. And therefore, we opt for prevention by phasing out the most harmful chemicals in consumer products. And we need to work on the substitution of chemicals with long-term harmful effects. Now, how are we going to achieve this? We are preparing a targeted, targeted revision of the REACH regulation, but also relevant product le legislation like the food contact materials regulation. Now, as for REACH, as one of the changes, we will increase information requirements on chemicals. Now, at the moment, the information that companies have to supply under REACH for substances in the lower tonnages does not fully allow identifying harmful substances such as carcinogens, yet this is crucial information for our objective of better protection. We will also be using REACH to prioritize restrictions of the most harmful chemicals. Restrictions on fuss are the top priority. These are the forever chemicals, highly persistent and a cause of enormous health and environmental damage in Europe and around the world. They will only be allowed when the use is essential for the society. And the work on this very large restriction dossier is in progress. Now, I know that many are eagerly awaiting this restriction, and I know you will say that we have chemicals databases, a basis like nowhere else in the world. And we have a very strong European chemicals agency. So why does it take time? And indeed, it is the experiment, experience in the implementation of our legislation over the years that has given us the evidence base for the new strategic approach, also the data and the evidence from the chemical agency. But to get it right, you do not rush. On the other hand, I want not to leave any doubt that it is coming and the chemical industry is actually already preparing for it. The second sphere is innovation. The main drive here is to boost the development of alternatives. We need new chemicals and new materials, 
but they need to be safe and sustainable by design from production to end of life. And we are working to develop the criteria that will drive research in this direction. Again, this is not a quick fix, it takes time, but we are making it happen through a new research and innovation program, an agenda for chemicals under our research and innovation program. Now, the third sphere, the third sphere is the simplification and consolidation of the existing legal framework. Here also work is already in progress. Notably for the idea of the one substance, one assessment process. And there uh, we are creating an EU coordination mechanism on safety assessments across chemical legislation. And this will lead to greater protectability and will ensure um, uh, effective allocation of scientific work on chemicals and more transparency. And we will step up compliance. The principle of the polluter pays and no data, no market will apply all the more. And registration numbers will be revoked in case of non-compliance. Now, one thing is compliance. The other one is enforcement. And we will step up enforcement too. With the establishment of an auditing capacity and more frequent checks on products and chemicals. Now, when you put these three spheres together, protection, innovation, simplification, consolidation, you have a strategy that allows the EU to play a leading role. And this strategy has also an important global aspect. We are championing very high standards and we have the ability to promote them around the world. And indeed, a global approach is needed. It is very important to help all our partners to step up their sustainability efforts. For that to happen, we must ensure also consistency. And that's why we will be adapting legislation to ensure that hazardous chemicals that are banned in the EU can't be produced for export to non-EU countries either. I think this is the bare minimum to ensure our credit credibility. Now, let me conclude. It was very long. I'm sorry for that. But this strategy can bring protection for our citizens and our planet and can lay the foundation for a thriving, sustainable chemical industry for the benefit of Europe and beyond. And it offers the potential to create a virtuous circle where protection and innovation constantly feed each other. And we can build that circle through cooperation. Cooperation between you, the stakeholders, industry, scientists, civil society, and authorities like us, regulatory authorities. We can deliver together on this vision of a toxic-free environment. We can maximize the safe contribution of chemicals to society. And together, we can avoid further harm to the planet and harm to future generations. So I thank you for your attention, and I wish that you have a great conference that make really chemicals safer. Thank you very much.